Hi everyone, welcome back. So this time we'll be calculating the rate of irreversibility for a heat engine. Now this diagram right here should look familiar if you've been following all of my videos in the past, because it's just a basic heat engine diagram. And since we're talking about irreversibility, this is simply gonna be how much work do we not get out of our system? Like, you know, we have so much energy going in and how much work that we could have had did we not have? And we see these problems the first way you're most likely going to be tempted to solve it is kind of like this follows. So you see like, okay, well, I've got, you know, 500 kilojoules per second going in. I've got 180 kilowatts going out. So 500 minus 180 is equal to 320. That's my irreversibility. Okay, great. Got the problem done. Fantastic. However, there's an issue. That is actually wrong. Now, why is it wrong? Well, let's go back and think about exergy. Exergy was that portion of my energy, because energy is the whole pi. Exergy is only a portion of that. And exergy is all the energy that can go to work. What that tells us right off the bat is that not all of my energy that's going into my system can go to work. Not all of it can. Um, if you want to put it into like, you know, just these, the source and sink terms, you could think about it like this way. So for example, this gas right here, it had to be heated up from a temperature of zero, let's just say, to 300, and then from 300 to 1200. But you can see that this guy right here is also 300, so that initial energy to get from zero to 300, well, that's not accessible because it's not changing. Only what's above that is energy that's actually accessible for work. And there's more to it than that, but that's just another way of thinking about it. So how are we gonna calculate it for this one? Well, it should clue you in when you see that there's a source and a sink. Instead of giving you heat, it's giving you um, a temperature. I'll also give this one heat in, but the temperature is the big thing for us. Because when you see temperatures for a source and a sink, you can think Carnot. Because if we wanna see how much work we're wasting, we need to compare it to the base, the best, and that'll be the Carnot efficiency. So my reversible workout is going to be equal to my reversible efficiency. So Carnot efficiency times how much heat goes in. So this is just coming back to us from chapter six. If I do that, I see I've got 375 kilowatts of power that I could have gotten out of the system if it was a perfect system. And then if I take that, I can find my reversibility by saying, okay, how much work did I get out of the system over how much work I could have gotten out of the system? Oop, a little bit too far there. Now, the next term we're gonna learn about is what's called second law efficiency. And because I just did a problem with this, I wanna go ahead and show it to you real quick before we get there. Now let's grab what it is. So our second law efficiency is simply comparing how I did to how I could do in the best of circumstances. So I had 180 kilowatts of power. I could have had 375 kilowatts of power. And so my second law efficiency tells me how close I got to the best case scenario. In many cases, this is better than the first law. And so that would be 180 divided by 37.375. So that was about 48%. We're gonna see this later. That looks like a nine, it's supposed to be a four. 48%, there we go. A little extra detail there. But hopefully this helps you to visualize what irreversibility is. It's not just the energy I didn't use, it's the energy that could have gone to work and didn't. And remember, not all of your energy can go to work. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.